Yeah, so I think most of you now are aware of that thing. I've been talking about it the last two conferences. Um, so the Sharplot package is uh, something we have inherited from uh, Adrian Smith. And uh, it's about uh, pr producing graphics, static graphics, uh, supporting as, ma as many output formats as we can. Um, would it be vectorial or raster? Um, the raster graphic ones, so pixel based, not coordinate based, uh, are available on only on dot net on dot net so far. Uh, but the vectorial graphics are available on all, pl all platforms. Um, the fundamental design is uh, a forward-going state machine. So uh, it's it's um, it was tightly designed. It was actually designed on top of the PostScript language, and it reuses the same uh, approach to graphics. And um, I mean, state machines is not a very cool technology these days. It's not a word you're gonna show off about. But one nice thing about it is that you're not restricted by the object orientation model. So Sharplot is is presented as object orientation, but in fact the object or orientation is very shallow, and you just do you just print stuff on your graphics and move forward and print other stuff, but you don't really come back to change what you have done in the past. Once you've printed something, it's done, just like PostScript does, uh, and this gives us advantages. Uh, advantages. Uh, I mean, in a typical chart utility. Um, you would have to build graphics that fit what the object hierarchy allows and you can't escape of that frame. Uh, doing it that way is slightly more general because you can basically do whatever you want as long as you don't want to undo what you've done previously. Uh, and I said that is is a cross-platform uh, obvi obviously, the APL workspace is on all platforms supported by Dialog. Uh, the .NET assembly right now runs only on Windows. Uh, that's because the Mono framework, the Linux equivalent of .NET, implementation of .NET, uh, does not do graphics well yet. But I think there are substantiated rumors of uh, Microsoft open sourcing C Sharp, so very soon the .NET assembly will be uh, cross-platform cross too, we can guess. Uh, and if people are worried, most of the time you won't be worried about performance when you do these kind of graphics, but the .NET assembly is uh, an order of magnitude faster. And it has raster graphic output. So Sharplot, uh, if you're not sure what it's about, I suggest you have a look at the 2013 presentation which goes through all the chart types or have a look at the sharplot.com website which is basically a copy of the Sharplot help. Um, so Sharplot is an addition to that package. So Sharplot is the one package that you're, that you're going to use if you're going to work with any of this. And uh, so, so far, Sharplot only had the chart generation engine, and now we have this new engine uh, besides it that does uh, paper reports, so text-based reports. Um, so you can do typography and uh, tabulation, uh, spreadsheet, if you want. Um, again, it's PostScript blaze, blah, blah, blah. So you fill your pages and you move on. You won't come back and say, oh, by the way, I want to change what I've done in a slightly, you just move on. So it's, it's obviously not as powerful as probably the, wor uh, the Microsoft Office OLE can be because it's a full, nice object or oriented model where you can change anything at any time. Um, but it makes uh, life much simpler when you're doing simple things, which most of reports are. Um, and the way, and again, because you fill pages, it's width that constrains that constrains the flow, and then sharply you specify which width you want to flow to, and it will 
fill the pages as needed. Um, there's an alpha version available. Uh, Andy will give you details about how to download it. It's available. It's for, I mean, if you feel brave, you can go and test it and tell me about uh, bugs or requests for enhancements. But I think uh, the most important is, if you're interested in this, have a look at the API and comment if there's any design mistake that, has, that I've made before I set it in stone and release it officially because after that it will be hard to change the API. So that's why I, I wanted to have this little alpha stage. Uh, and you have uh, basically not much more than until the end of the year to, to do that. After that it's set in stone and I won't change the API. I will just add patch features on top of it. Uh, and while all these things happen with Sharpleaf, the Sharplot engine uh, is not affected. Uh, it's, I mean, alpha is a very is a slightly scary word for customers, but it it only applies to Sharpleaf. It doesn't apply to the rest of Sharplot, which is charting engine. Uh, in fact, I've fixed uh, many bugs during the Sharpleaf uh, development. All right, so. Um, the way I'm going to do this is just to walk you through the concepts that Sharpleaf manipulates. So it's going to, it's not, it might be a little bit boring, but hey, I'm here for that. Um, so the first thing, the first thing you have to manipulate if you want to create a, a report is to create a, a document layout, a master pages if you want. So you're going to decide on what, on, on what paper you're going to flow stuff. So here's a, an example uh, of a paper that I want to fill and I want Sharplot to put stuff in the boxes there. So I define a, a document layout which is which simply is a list of page layouts, right? So I can have different layouts on on pages that follow each other. Um, obviously one of the one of the properties is its paper size and fill. So each page may have a different paper size and fill. Yeah, every time I mention one of these concepts, basically it will be one hit into the API. Would it be a property or a method or a quad new, whatever, but I'm just talking about the concepts here. Um, the coordinates, once you've designed the decided of the paper side, all the coordinates will be basically when it's positive, you go from the top left in that direction, and when it's negative, it's the other way around, so that's quite convenient to place stuff. Uh, obviously, you can have positive X and negative Y and whatever. And uh, the unit is the standard typographical unit, which is a point. I don't think it's used in other fields than typography, but. Uh, people who are used to it, uh, I mean, most people who do this stuff are used to it, which is uh, one inch divided into, one inch is divided in, in 72 points. Um, so here are the typical items that I can put on my layout. Remember, I'm still, rem I'm still designing the master pages. I haven't started to put any content in it. Uh, so typically you could have uh, an image, a rule, uh, some kind of fixed text, which by the way is less fixed than it sounds because you can have um, s arguments such as uh, page numbers which will be uh, replaced by Sharpleaf. Uh, you can have custom arguments if you have, if you want to pass uh, some kind of variables to it so that, so it's not really fixed. Uh, maybe, maybe I should rename it. And the most important items are the frames. That's where everything is going to happen. Um, and a frame has a couple of properties. It has a box, which is uh, possibly some kind of edge and possibly some kind of fill. Um, it has a gutter, so that typically if you have an edge, you don't want anything to happen close to the border, so you will define a gutter. And then you also define how the frame will be filled. So what you can do on the right hand side is either to clip or not and what you can do on the bottom is not only you can clip or not but you can also say neither clip nor uh, spill but skip to the next frame once you've reached the bottom. 
so here's what it looks once you flow text in it. Okay, obviously this is a concept that everybody knows, a font. Uh, there's not much to say about a font. It has a name, so here's its times, everybody knows it. Uh, a style, which could be regular, bold, italic, underline, strike out, or any of the combinations. And a color. And uh, there are, you probably need to need two more concepts. One is the font size, which is the height that the font requires to draw it. In, in reality, it may or may not use slightly less than that, but it won't use more than that. It won't overspill the size. But uh, fonts are designed in such a way that there is the, the, the constraints on height position are quite relaxed and you can't, and by the way, you can't really know the proportions. I mean, different fonts can have different uh, vertical proportions. And another thing is uh, the interline, so that would be the, the space between the lines. So here you have two lines and it can, it can be fixed or it can be relative to the font size. Uh, the baseline, so the, the line, you can see where it is, the red one. Uh, you don't really need it if you do it automated. Uh, I mean, it, when you throw stuff, you only need the font size and the interline and it computes it for you. The baseline is used for uh, free text when you have, when you want to typically fix text or when, when you're not flowing, when you're drawing. It, it happens on charts too. Then the Y coordinate will always be the one of that um, uh, red line. Then uh, going on, the, the the next concept is the concept of a paragraph. Uh, again, I guess you know what a paragraph is. Uh, so it has quite a number of properties. Uh, you have indents, of course, uh, with a special indent for the first line. Uh, any of these could be positive, could be zero, so you if you don't want to have it and could be negative if you're doing fancy stuff obviously and space before and space after which are uh, vertical space that you want to insert around your paragraphs to make them appear more nicely um, and by the way you can notice that we don't insert space before if we're at the top of the frame so the first paragraph really sticks to the top although it does have some space before but it's used only when there is something before. Uh, you can have bullets there, a bit uh, lower. Uh, so you define some kind of string for the bullet. And there are special strings for counters, obviously. Uh, and you have a special indent, uh, because usually bullet lists are, may or may not be indented like the rest, uh, like non-bulleted paragraphs. And first indent applies to it too. But as you can see here, it's it's rarely. I, mean, I don't think it's really nice to have it with bullets. But yeah. um, and then, so what, once you design all these constraints on on both dimensions, uh, you decide how text will flow into that. So you have an alignment, which could be left, center, or right, obviously, and uh, you could decide to wrap or not depending on, on what you're doing. If you're going to wrap, there are two notions interesting to know. One is the soft hyphen, which is a silent character that you insert into your words. So that character will not appear in the final text, but it's a hint for Sharpleaf that it may break that word at that point and, and put a hyphen. So uh, if you're, if you don't really need it when you do it uh, when, when you're doing wide text, but if you're doing very small stuff and you want high control over it, you probably are going to use that. Uh, and non-breakable space is another one where it's a space, but you say, don't break on that one, I want the, the words around it to stick together. Okay, and uh, a last one is, uh, well actually it's not the last one, but uh, you have obviously old style tabs. Uh, they are supported because uh, they have been in typography forever and I guess some people rely on it, but obviously if you'll never use them, I don't recommend use it, using them at all. Uh, they're hard to automate. I won't go into the details, but you have a typical problem here where 
you have been using tabs and your field is larger than the tabs, so it, it, it shifts everything and it's basically it's manageable only in a manual way. But it's there if you know how to use it carefully. Um, another thing about paragraph is what is called widow and orphan control. Uh, so here we have flowed some text and you notice that this paragraph across a, f uh, a frame switch uh, leaves its last line on the side and that generally, that some people regard it as uh, not beautiful. And uh, so the way we avoid this is by setting something which is called a keep to a number of lines. So you say, uh, uh, here, by setting the keep to two, I say I don't want any uh, any less than two lines to be on its own on either side of a page uh, of a frame switch. Uh, so that's it. And the other, so if you know this, if you know these terms, keep applies both to to window and orphan. So it could be on either side. Either either it applies both before and after a page break. Um, so by the way, on this paragraph, which is a five-line paragraph, if you set the keep to three, then the whole paragraph will have to be pushed to the next frame. So keep generally, you want to keep it uh, to a low value because very quickly you're forced to bump to the next frame every time. And uh, another control you have in, in that area is uh, space following. So typically, uh, you attach, so all these styles about paragraph are packed in, uh, in a, a class. And, uh, basically you flow paragraph and at attach a, a style to each paragraph. Typically, uh, here my titles have a style where the font is bold and the text is in normal. And I, my title paragraph here fits at the bottom of the page, but it's not nice because, because it's a title, it, it's nice that it's followed by some of the content that comes with it. So I've, I said this guy, which, uh, this property, which is called space following, to say, make sure that there is at least that much space after the end of the paragraph so that you don't have that kind of problem. Um, another thing you can do is include stuff, uh, that where it becomes slightly sexy, but not too much. <laughs> Uh, you can have, uh, images. So here it's as a paragraph, a center paragraph. So, but you can also include them on the left or on the right and, and your text flow will nicely wrap around it. Um, and, uh, so the way, the, I mean, the easy way to, to flow text content is to work at a paragraph level. But obviously, if you're going to do very, very detailed stuff, you want to go to the character level, and this is uh, supported by Sharpleaf. So here's a, a few examples of what you can do. Um, this guy at the top is called a, a dropped capital. So it's, uh, you've probably seen that in books. It's a, a nice way to start a, a new chapter or something, and, and Sharpleaf takes care of doing that for you, and you can have a nice font and a nice color and everything. Um, and so you can, you, so you can, you can change the paragraph style as you type stuff. So in this case, uh, uh, I was able to change the font between characters. And then you have very low level control such as, uh, go to the next tab, go to the next line, uh, jump to the next paragraph, jump to the next frame, jump to the next page, whatever. So you have, you can have that kind of fine control. Uh, you can have rules to, separate paragraphs too, they are nice. Uh, superscripts and subscripts, obviously, and the combination of the two. And uh, you can box paragraphs uh, with some kind of line style. So that, so, so far, uh, I think you've seen most of w what Shoplift manipulates in terms of uh, typography, so there is nothing else to know. You can, if you know that, you can start flowing stuff quite easily. Uh, so the the other big part in Sharpleaf is tabulation, so basically printing tables to paper. So here's a typical table, uh, and again you have some control about how you move around. So basically 
you're you're in a, you're, you're in a grid and you're going to move around cells or move around rows and columns and flowing stuff into the cells and into the rows as you go so there are many strategies to fill a table and you can use any any um so well, yeah, table has quite a number of settings uh let's start with the table wide setting settings uh, obviously this you can have a a cell wise gutter which will apply on all cells um again because the width constraint applies to table so you 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 will first tell you will tell it which width you know in on the columns and then it will have to fit it it will decide basically of the height uh depending on what you're flowing um and uh you can set things such as uh, titles uh and as you see they are boxed with the same box as the table and also they are repeated on all pages if the table is broken so that's what titles are but uh if you want things that repeat on all sub pages without being boxed and stuff that would be called retain so you can retain a column and it will appear on all sub pages uh oh and and obviously a table can have a heading as you see a heading a subheading a caption footnote uh, the difference between the first few guys I'll show you in a minute. Uh, then you have a uh, row and column wise settings. Uh, so again, you have tighter control on the column width and depending on that it will be forced to flow and take some height. So um, the column width could be fixed size or it could be relative. That, that means spl split the remaining space uh, in some ratio between the columns, or it could be out of it. That means obviously take the width that whatever, what of the largest content in that column. So that's a column wise setting. Uh, you have the minimum row height, uh, because the row height is decided by the engine, uh, you might want to prevent it, them to, from being too small. Uh, and you have the grid, obviously, so that would be, uh, deciding of the width, the, the line style and the color of the lines. And these, uh, these can be set as cycles. So when you're at any cell in the table, as you go through the table and fill it, you can set it to a cycle and that cycle will apply from the current cell you're pointing at onwards. Uh, obviously and backwards because it's a cycle. It's, uh, it goes both ways. So you can change it at any time, uh, and cycle through settings. And then you have cell wise settings. Um, so again, it could be defined as cycle, row wise cycles or column wise cycles or a matrix that will tile the whole table. Uh, and the settings, uh, that are, uh, that are down to the cell, uh, is the, the font, obviously with all the settings that we've seen that the font can have. Uh, a box, you can have a special cell that has a special box, like there. Uh, Alignment, again, text alignment, which could be here. You can see examples of left alignment, center, right, and decimal alignment, where obviously you have control over the decimal character and it will, it will do it for you. Uh, and that's about it. So, uh, you can see that there are many strategies to fill a table. Here's how you, you could do that one. Uh, so you have years and countries and some numbers. So the the first one would be the titles. I want them to be aligned in some way. So I set the alignment and I flush some rows. And my cell pointer, which started at the first one, is now the one above because as I fill rows, I want to be at, at the beginning of the next row. Then from there, I add a column. And again, my cell pointer moves to there. Obviously, there is another function to add cells to a column and moving the cell pointer to the next cell in that column. The, that, that's not what we're doing here. Then add a few rows. Then move to the next empty column. That's quite useful. So uh, it says, find me the next column starting at row two that is empty. And, and from there, I can flush the totals. Uh, and there is my table. Um, so the way to flush a table on a frame 
the default is to take as much width as required by your settings. And obviously, that could be wider than a frame, so it will split it on many frames. Uh, but you can force it to fit to, for the width to fit on a number of frames. So here, if you if you set it to one frame, obviously it will have to scale it down to fit wh whatever that frame is. But uh, in this case, our table is uh, wider than than its height. And if I want to put it, this is a landscape page, but if I want to put it on a on a portrait page. Uh, Sharplot can, uh, Sharpleaf can break it down for you, and that's how it do it. And uh, you can see the the point of uh, retaining rows and columns here. I want the totals to appear on all sub pages so that I can always see the totals. And uh, and uh, and you see also the difference between a caption and a heading. The heading appears only once, whereas the caption is on on all sub pages to remind you what table you're looking at. So um, that's so you've seen everything there's, there is to know about Sharpleaf. So not so many concepts. But I think you can do uh, pretty. I mean, nice, nice report. Obviously, it's not as good as uh, as detailed as Word, but it's easy to use, and I think that's the main point. Uh, you don't want to cripple your mind too much uh, with the with some kind of complex API. Um, so the official release will be by the end of the year. Uh, uh, the alpha version again is available. Uh, you can have it right now. Um, again, uh, feel free to tell anything if you're interested in it before it is carved in stone. And oh yeah, uh, uh, the alpha release has these guys missing. So at the moment there is no SVG and raster output, but there obviously will be very soon. And just table cell merging because it appeared e it was much more complex than I thought it would be. So. But I'll, I'll do it soon. End of story. Thank you for listening.